Good morning, I'm TikTok Tony and in this segment we're going to discuss how to install and adjust a British dial clock. So here's a typical components of the dial clock. Um, we have the pegs, four pegs typically. Winding crank could be either this type or the crank type and this is a type of screw I use uh, you need to use whatever screw you feel appropriate but these work well for me in wall boards uh, this holds a hundred pounds typical weight of the dial clock is about 16 to 20 pounds here's some instructions that you could find on my website explaining how to adjust the rate of the clock this is how fast and slow it's running uh, here we talk about the pendulum Here's the pendulum with the components, the pendulum rod and the pendulum bob. The bob slides up and down on the rod. The higher the bob is, the faster the clock will run. Turn the nut on the bottom of the clock, on the bottom of the rod, this way, and the bob has actually moves down on the rod. Turn it this way and it moves up on the rod. So here we have the the clock and the box. The box is hold, held on with pegs that go through the holes here. There's typically four pegs that go through four holes, two either side and into the poles of the box. There's also a lip on the top of the clock which fits on here and holds it somewhat from going down vertically. So here's the pendulum again in close up. Here's the pendulum rod with a suspension spring on the top. The suspension spring is a top cock with a pin through it. This pin sits on the top of the bridge and I'm going to show you that in a second. The other important part is the slot here where the uh, uh, crutch pin goes through here and we're going to see that in one second. So here we are looking at the back of the movement. Now I do this operation via the bottom door and the side door, uh, but here's what I do. I lift the pendulum up through the bottom door, I make the top cock sit on the bridge here, and this, this pin here sits on a little groove here in the bridge to hold it sturdy, so it sits on there. The next important thing is the crutch pin has to go through this slot here like that. If it's not through the slot it won't work properly. It has to be through the slot and moving the, it backwards and forwards. Now we have here a crocodile clip here that's lead to my microset which is amplifying the sound. But you, the same sound as you hear, it's just amplified for the video. So now we have the pendulum installed, the next important thing is to get the clock running in beat. And what we're doing here is adjusting the uh, verge crutch Let's take the pendulum off. Every time the, the pendulum moves side to side, the escape wheel moves one click. But it has a range at which it clicks. It clicks left, right and left, right and left. And you see here it clicking here and here. Now, if that's not in beat, you can adjust it by taking it outside of its normal range by pushing it. Now it clicks at here and here instead of here and here. So this is what we're doing. We're adjusting its point at which it clicks to get it to run naturally, which is, as you can see, it's naturally running there. If we move it over to here, it would never run naturally. So here I've amplified the sound here so you can uh, hear the clock running in beat. It's an even tick and tock. And if I move the top to the left or, or bottom to the left or right, then you could hear the clock running out of beat. Now, so we achieve this by putting my hand in the bottom door or the side door and adjusting this by pushing it or by pulling it to make the clock run or make the verge work in its appropriate range to make the beat run evenly. So here we have the box, and the nail, and obviously the hanger hangs on the nail. So 
Now here's the dial, and the pegs go through the holes here. And at this point, it's best to have the pegs in your pocket, so you can just bring them up and put them in, and then through the holes here. The, this piece here is very important because it sits on top here and allows you to uh, get the registration of the pegs in the hole correctly. So we're just going to face it in there, put it in the top and slide it down until it sits on that piece at the top. This is where it's important to have your pegs in your pocket because you're keeping the dial firmly against the wall, pegs in the pocket and put them through the holes. Now we install the pendulum, open the side door and the bottom door. I insert it via the bottom door and just as we looked in the previous segment, making sure the crutch is through the slot. And then your clock is ready to run. Give the pendulum a little kick and it's running. So as we discussed before, put the hand up here and adjust that crutch until the clock is running in beat. So as you can see, turning the clock left and right would also adjust the clock to in beat. But what you need to do is to make it level on the wall and then adjust this so that it's in beat, but also Final and small adjustment can be done by just moving it very slightly on the wall. So the clock should run for eight days. Here's the winding point. I like to use this type of winding crank. Uh, the uh, regular key that you would use, it tends to uh, be a bit tiring turning the key. It has to be about 25 turns. Better to use the winding crank, hold the clock like this, and then wind it like this. When, it, when it's fully wound, it should come to a stop. You should feel a stop. There. So you can't wind any further. With the dial clock, you can turn the hands forward to adjust the correct time. Moving the minute and hand only, the hour hand will follow. Or you can turn them backwards, whichever way is closest to your correct time. As far as cleaning is concerned, uh, with the glass, I would recommend you spray Windex onto a paper towel and then apply that here. Don't spray Windex directly onto the glass because it would get on the wood surround. Windex has alcohol, alcohol will react with the shellac. So onto a paper towel and then rub it on the glass and then a clean paper towel can rub it off. As far as the dial is concerned, I wouldn't recommend you clean the dial at all. As far as the surround is concerned, uh, it's wooden with shellac finish, so I'd recommend a wax product and I would recommend you do not use a silicon based product.